welcome back to Linda's Pantry. So today I'm going to bring you along for a really uh, long-awaited video of my version of tamales. I've made these in a long, long, long time. I used to make them every week and sell them. And so uh, I kind of got burnt out on it at one point, decided, you know, I didn't need to eat any more tamales for a while. But uh, I got some pork on sale. It's beautiful. And I thought, I'm going to make some uh, tamales. So if it inspires you to stay with me, go down in the about section, check out all the links that I've left for you. I might be able to save you some money on some meat if you go register at Zacon Foods. And um, that's free. They don't spam you. And uh, let's go make some tamales. I'll show you how you do it. We're looking it. for flavor. And I, you cannot cheap out on your, um, how much sauce, and I always serve it with extra sauce because, and I call this a mole sauce, but I know it's not an authentic mole, so. So get all your seeds out, put those chilies in a saucepan, and we're gonna cook this down. And it's gonna be fantastic. Oh, I haven't done this in a long time. I used to do this every week and sell tamales, and I thought, you know, Tis the season, and I got what I thought was ribs, and it was, uh, they called it pork brisket bones, and it was just kind of the, next to the brisket, I guess, so I'm just cooking that down. I'll take all the bones out when we're done. Um, it's in the crock pot, and we'll shred that up. And if you get some seeds in here, don't worry about it. So I'm gonna finish that off, we're gonna Put some water on here and get these steamed up, and it's going to be fantastic. As you can see, my mole sauce, or the sauce that I'm going to use on the meat, the shredded meat, as well as to have served alongside, I like extra sauce. So that's got all three chilies in here. I've got about six cloves of garlic that I just really roughly chopped, because this is all going to get pureed. So far, it's been simmering about 20 minutes. I like to simmer it for about a half an hour till the chilies are nice and rehydrated and super soft, which are starting to fall apart, which is good. I've got some salt, uh, some chicken bouillon or chicken um, stock concentrate. So I also put a packet of this in here. It's got, it's got some salt, but it has some coriander flavor in the background. Um, it just really boosts this up a notch or five and then I can always adjust it if, it if I feel like it's got too much salt in there I can add more chilies and simmer longer I'm not worried about it and um, all I'm worried about is that I have enough for the amount of meat that I'm gonna have and I think I do and if you want this sauce a little spicier you can add some cayenne pepper which I have fresh maybe I'll put a couple actually they're dry but they're out of my garden Maybe I'll just put a couple of these in there, um, just these little guys, and let them rehydrate with the rest of the peppers. Get those seeds out though, because these little buggers are hot. And that'll add some more flavor too, so we're just gonna pop those in there. A couple of those won't hurt the mix any at all. Okay, so I'll bring you back when we're getting ready to waz it up. Okay, so this is cooked down for about 40 minutes now. It smells fantastic. I do want to tell you that I put in a teaspoon of cinnamon. Um, you can add cocoa powder to this as well, but I'm going to um, opt out. I found an ancho chili, and that'll kind of take the place of that. And we're just going to take the immersion blender, turn your burner off, and start blending. So I'm going to blend this until it's smooth. And we have the sauce that we want. And I'll bring you back. So we're all done blending like. this up. And as you can see, that's about the consistency. Um, it's, it's a sauce. It's not too soupy. And I'm just going to take a little taste right there. Mm. Wow. It's delicious. I'm going to let it simmer now. Um, and just become absolutely rich and thick because we want it kind of thick. Uh, not like a paste or anything, but a definite sauce because the juices from that meat are going to dilute this. So, and then we'll have some on the side as well to go over top. All right, guys. So let's get to making the masa. With so, guys, I apologize right now for my uh, pressure cooker going in the background, but I'm pressure cooking some chucker. 
um, which is an up and game bird that my husband hunts every weekend and I want to try checker um, tamales as well so I've got that meat cooking I've slow cooked my pork um, overnight and I I strain that out of in a colander so I get all the onion and garlic and here's the broth and then I mix my mole sauce in there so this is the broth from the pork you can add chicken stock you can do it however you want this is some actually a not lard it's Crisco you could use lard if you want um, I just soften that up so it's easy to work with and this is definitely not diet food, but that's all right. We're not dieting today. So this is baking soda. I mean baking powder. Sorry. Baking powder. It's going to make them lofty. It's going to make them absolutely delicious. And then we've got our masa flour. And you're going to make this mixture kind of wet because... Um, they're going to steam in the corn husk. So, I'm just going to start adding the masa flour. It's going to rehydrate in here and until we get a consistency that's kind of like a wet cookie dough, if you will. So, that's about three cups right there. Let's see what we got going on. It's going to need more than that. It's probably going to need more like six or eight and like I said I shredded the pork and I mixed in some of my mole sauce or my chili sauce that I made for this and here we go so we're gonna keep mixing and when I get the right consistency for I'm you I'll show you a, a couple of these a couple different ways I'm doing them and let you know, this is the corn husks. You can get these in most any grocery store, especially this time of year, but um, you're gonna wanna soak these for a minimum of a half hour, but I soak these for a couple hours in the sink with some hot water, and that softens them up. Pretty simple. Then once they're all softened and you're ready to start making your tamales, you spread that corn husk out, and that's just your wrapper. It's like a present. Um, you're going to grab some of your masa that you've made, and that masa is got chick. It's got pork stock, chicken stock, some lard and or vegetable shortening, and that's what I used. Um, but we also had some additional fat from that pork, so I didn't use as much as some recipes call for. I just kind of, you know, play it by ear. And you're going to put a thin layer. You don't want too much. I don't think there's anything worse than a really thick uh, amount of the masa on there. And then I've got my home canned spicy beans. I'm just going to put a little bit of that in there. Those black beans are delicious. It adds another little bit. It also stretches your tamales out a little further. You can do tamales with anything. You can do it with fruit. You can do it with um, fruit and nuts. You can do it with almost anything. You can do it with any kind of meat you want. And in fact, we are going to do chakra picante. So I like a fair amount of meat. And I know that traditionally I had um, a gal that came over and said, oh no, you're putting way too much meat, only a teaspoon of meat in each tamale. So you're basically getting a bunch of masa. And you're just gonna roll it up like a cigar. And where that seam is, I flip that end over. I don't do any fancy ties. They stand up just like this in the steamer basket. So we're gonna do one more without beans for you. And it's hard to make a small batch. I mean, if you're going to take the time to do this, you might as well make a really nice sized batch of masa. And I just press that down with my hands. You know, clean hands are your best tools. And uh, I haven't found that spreading it out with a spatula works better for me. I mean, it helps, but it's not the foolproof. And the 
Masa should be like a wet cookie dough for sure. And we'll do this one with just plain meat. You can put cheese in these, which I will put some cheese in some of these. Uh, about, you know, I don't know, three tablespoons of meat is what I use. I like to have a fair amount of meat and sauce in there. And I also top them with some sauce. So there you go. It's just so that masa totally surrounds your meat mixture. And when they're steamed, the masa cooks completely. And there you go. It's a beautiful tamale. Okay, okay so my steamer basket. basket is full of tamales. And we're gonna steam these for about 40 minutes, which is gonna cook the masa and make it a little more firm, as we all know and love the tamale outside. And it's so full of flavor with the pork broth and chicken stock that I added in there. Did have to add a little more chicken stock to get that wet cookie dough that's spreadable, um, that consistency that I like. So I will bring you back in 40 minutes and we're going to plate this up. Super okay, easy. so these tamales are fresh out of the steamer and I just grabbed two of them. One's a little on the smaller size and one is a little larger. I'm sure that'll be a good starter for my husband. And you're just gonna pull that corn husk off. That masa has steamed, look at that. And it, it becomes a little more firm. And I'm doing this on a separate plate just so you can see what I've got going. And then we're gonna put them on our serving platter plate slash, there you go. Just like that, that's a perfect tamale right there. I don't care who you are. That is amazing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. This one is separating because the wrapper overlapped. That's okay. And it's got the black beans in there. And we're just going to put these tamales right there on our plate. Fantastic. So now that I've got my tamales out here on my plate, I'm gonna go ahead and you love it with a little extra cheese. Well, a little cheese. We don't have any cheese in these. Although you could add cheese, you could add pretty much anything you want to this. I'm gonna add some cheese just because it goes with the tamale fare. And then we're gonna go ahead. I've got my warm, uh, mole sauce, which is fantastic. We're going to add some of this. It keeps them moist and delicious. Mm. My mouth has been watering all afternoon over this. I'm just going to say. And for those of you that like a squeeze of lime, Really juicy little lime there. And we're gonna take a bite. I like oh. the idea of having the black beans in there. Ooh, look at that. It's just a, a delicious, that masa just comes together almost like a really soft, um, I wanna say cornbread dumpling mixture. It's really delicious. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Oh my gosh, just the moss on itself. No wonder people don't put too much stuff in here. I'm kind of a, I like to stuff things full. So if I make a burrito, it's got some stuffing in it. And same with these, but so delicious. Mm. I can taste all the broth in that masa in itself and the meat is absolutely just melt in your mouth tender and then you have that mole sauce or what I call mole. So I hope it inspires you to come back next time. Mm, we can't wait to finish eating these and these are great for the freezer so don't forget you can make these up ahead, put them in the freezer and you have lunch, dinner, whatever, party because <laughs> it makes a lot. So I hope I see you next time. All right guys, I can't.